I've heard stories that BJ did that and Clarence Garnstead did that. They never got out of the therapeutic model, and that was a very brief time that people would come and stay with them, whether it was at Garnstead's Mount Horror or at BJ Palmer's clinic. That they would stay there for weeks at a time when their field practitioner couldn't get them well. You know? But you could. I mean, that's theoretically what BJ did. He just didn't adjust. But he would check the scan of the person every hour and the hour. Fine, absolutely. You know I mean? And that was like his way of. Right, and I say you, you did the same thing. Then someone going to work and coming home and all that stuff. But also, they usually took time off to do that because they were there on a temporary basis. Mm -hmm. And also, keep in mind, too, BJ did not make his money in chiropractic. I don't even know if he charged people to come to his clinic. I'm home. The what? He did. He, he just did. ran it in the red. Ran it in the red. So he charged them, but they didn't pay? or They did pay, but it wasn't enough to cover the research. Cover, cover, yeah, right, yeah. right. Yeah, so, and that's fine too, because he made tons of money <coughs> in radio and television. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I don't want you to run in the red in your office. I want you to be massively profitable, and you have to be. Wouldn't it be horrible if somebody signed up for a year in my office and paid $1,250 and in five months I was closed because I didn't have the revenue because I wasn't able, I was unable to sell it and make it in business and that happens. It's horrible. I don't want that to happen to you. So keep in mind, I'm not saying to adjust. You will never hear me say adjust. You will not. You will hear me say check. Come in and get checked. Come in and get checked. Does anybody come in every single day? No. Do a lot of people come in every single day when they start? Yes. Do even some people come in twice a day when they start? Yes. And we're building momentum. That positive, constructive survival value that we're building over time. People have been living with fatigue with subluxations their whole life. I don't want to see you three times a week. I want to see you seven times a week. Whether or not you get here, that's on you. My job is your chiropractor. I'll tell you what you need. And when a fatigue with subluxation is present, Your body needs help in making an adjustment. Can your body make an adjustment? Can your body take a universal force, even if it doesn't come from a chiropractor, and make an adjustment in the spine? Is that theoretically possible? Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'm not ruling that out. We just don't know when it happens because we as humans didn't analyze it. And we as humans will always be fallible, guys. We'll always be fallible. There's no way around that. So when you hear people, I remember I was speaking at Sherman. I don't mean to make people mad. God, I promise I don't. I just do. And there was a student there, and she was real sharp, and she was <coughs> real, real good. And I was talking about the theory of a vertical subluxation, and that you have to go with the best theoretical analysis that you feel most comfortable with. And there is no way that you can predict a physiological outcome. And then she was talking about her, 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 her field doctor. Maybe it was one of the folks who had like a consultation group as well. Say, well, my doctor uh, saw somebody that was having um, a seizure and and analyzed and gave and gave that person an adjustment and that seizure went away. How do you explain that? They got lucky. They got lucky. Same way, if it's true, Harvard Harvard got lucky when Harvey Lillard's hearing went away. How many deaf people have adjusted that their hearing didn't get restored? Or didn't he say, oh, he had a cure for deafness? Yeah, he advertised the cure for deafness. Yeah. Advertised the cure for deafness, and then other people um, started to get well of all kinds of things, polio and everything else. Then he started advertising the cure. We found the cause of all disease. And a guy in our, um, the other part of Iowa got real mad, said, you stole me. <clears throat> What I developed, and that fellow was A.T. Still. Correct. And D.E. Palmer said, I've never met A.T. Still. I don't know what he's talking about. And I remember Reggie Gould talking about evidence that he did attend an A.T. AT Still seminar. Interesting. Doesn't matter not really. Because back then, you owned it. Chiropractic was the property of B.J. and D.E. Palmer. Even today, people say, well, if they discovered it and they developed it, it's theirs. Shouldn't we just stick to what they 
No, no, chiropractic's a principle, like electricity. Should we just stick with um, what, what, what Benjamin Franklin came up with, or, 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 or uh, uh, Tesla when he worked with Edison? Should we just stick with that? Do they own electricity? I don't think so. We make it better. And these lights will be outdated. And there'll be a better way to do that, Thomas Edison, who really probably didn't invent anything, but was able to market it and take all the credit for it. Well, Nikolai Tesla worked and worked. People forget that Thomas Edison thought it was direct current that was going to be supplying the cities with electricity, and AC current was too dangerous. I will show you how dangerous it is. I'll execute an elephant or something. <coughs> and it ended up not executing the elephants, just torturing it. But history can be kind. kind of Thomas Jefferson, who was a great writer, or maybe I'm just biased to John Adams because we're both from Massachusetts. Anybody see the play Hamilton? Check it out, it's really good. So guys, any questions so far? Any questions? No. Okay. You gotta be absolutely certain about your why. If you're gonna be successful in practice, your why is gonna be your driving force. Your why is everything from your past. Your why is all the values that you've grown to love. Your why is your understanding of chiropractic. Your why is the understanding of vertical supplementation. Your why is the understanding of your place in society. Your why is your understanding of how you can help people live better. And your why is going to set up your scope of practice, your definition of chiropractic, and the structure you have in your office. I've had chiropractors work with me who were very nervous. I don't know if I want to take care of this person. They said, I just kept repeating in my mind. Vertebral subluxations are always bad. And their adjustment is always good. They say, even to this day, Ryan Claire, a fraternity brother from Palmer and Iowa, they say, it created massive certainty. And like Eric was saying, you have to be certain. If you're going to sell this, you've got to be certain. Maybe he's not going to cut it in certain areas. In other areas, it, it will. Will this condition go away? Will that condition go away? Maybe. We'll focus on what we're absolutely certain of. That if you make this a habit, you come in throughout your life, two, three, four times a week, in the next 10, 20 years, your body will be stronger because of it. We cannot predict which physiological function, but we can say with absolute certainty that the correction of these vertebral subluxations allowing for a more fuller expression of life is going to make your body stronger and improve the quality of your life, helping you live closer to your fullest potential. Is chiropractic the only habit people need in their lives? No. Joe says no. Anybody, anybody, anybody agree? Who agrees that there's more than chiro chiropractic necessary for a strong, healthy, functioning body? Absolutely. Who doesn't agree? Who thinks chiropractic is the only thing? Who thinks if you don't have a subluxation, you can do anything? Survive a bullet wound, breathe underwater. Anybody believe that? Grow an arm if you get an arm. Huh? I wish. There are people who believe that. Limitations of matter. more powerful when a person says yes or no? I'd say it depends on the context of the question. Give me an example. Like if someone comes to your office asking, hey, can you help me? You saying yes can be a proper force, or if someone is trying to ask you to do something you don't want to do, then no can also be a proper force. I can totally see that. If I ask you a question, do you feel more empowered in general 
By saying yes or by saying no? Is it that or by saying no? Absolutely. If we're in a logical argument and I'm asking you logical questions and I'm like, do you think this? Do you think that, that this table is brown? Well, it is brown, but it's no, it is one more answer. Yes. So if you think that this table is brown, would you also consider this table <coughs> rectangular in shape? See how you like this set me up? I'm not sure where we're going with this. People feel that way, right? That's right. Yeah, yeah. So no can be a little bit more powerful. Are you opposed to taking a few minutes to hear about chiropractic?